Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. So today, it is one of those days that is the usual for the cryptocurrency and digital asset market where Bitcoin has taken a little bit of a correction of $10,000 over 24 hours. So the real question is, why did this happen? Was it because of a tweet from Elon Musk? Was it a massive outflow from F2 pool and mining pool base in China? Or was it because of the reopening of the Chinese markets. We're going to take a look at all three scenarios and I'm going to tell you why it really doesn't matter. And actually, this is great news for dollar cost averagers. On top of that, we'll take a look at the old school entrepreneur.com where they talked about JP Morgan said that Bitcoin would never go above 40,000 and we leave that in the dust. We'll also take a look at what is going on with crypto.com or their coin as it jumps up over 100% in less than 24 hours because of a token burn. And finally, the CEO of Ledger comes out and has a AMA, which is going to be scheduled for this Friday. And I've always said, it doesn't matter what happened as far as a uh, scandal or a breach, it is all how you handle it. So we'll take a look at all that, but let's take a look at what's going on in the market right now, which is today. So we're looking at uh, today is uh, February 22nd, 10 a.m. El Paso, Texas time. Not a bad day so far. I mean, as far as weather-wise, <laughs> not so great for the market. And if you're new to the market um, and you've come over from, from the traditional space, uh, welcome. Uh, congratulations. What a great day to start uh, on your journey of cryptocurrency. Uh, but just know that uh, these days are common and it's not a big deal. And actually, if, if you look at it in the right way, uh, when you take a look at these huge dips, you can just take a step back and go, you know what? These are great sales. When you go into any kind of store, any kind of uh, it doesn't matter if it's it, it is a clothing store, electronic store, whatever else. When you see something 10% off, 20% off, what do you usually do? You usually want to buy it. It's amazing to me uh, how people just look at these different types of things and as far as the market goes and go, oh my God, it's 20%. I got to get rid of it. Instead of looking and going, wow, what a flash sale. I used to have that same mentality. It just as years has hardened me into this market, it just is like another great day to pick up some really cheap cryptocurrency and digital assets because I know where they're going and uh, it is not, they're not going south. They will always rebound. And uh, you know, what goes up must come down. Uh, but these are the days that you live for as far as a investor. So uh, Bitcoin right now is uh, at 53,000. It looks like it uh, dropped 7%. Hey, not too bad. Ethereum dropped over 10% though. Wow. 1727. And um, we did a video yesterday and I talked about how I was concerned about the market. It was very difficult for me to sell. You can, I'll link this up at the very end. And I sold some of my uh, Ethereum at $2,000. Now, does this make me Nostradamus and I can predict everything? No, I just got lucky. That's really what it comes down to. Uh, I'm just an investor. I'm not a trader. I, I do a little bit of trading, but it's like 5%, 3 to 5% of my portfolio. I don't like to trade that much. It just doesn't really work out for me. But it, but it is fun, and I'm learning from uh, the guys over there at Market Rebellion, also from Trade the Chain. So when I do these things, I and people, you know, after that video, like you're an idiot, you got to stop selling because it's only going to go to the moon. Well, here we are. So you just have to remember that uh, just pick your price points and whatever your goals are, whatever you're comfortable with, because my goals are not your goals. Just take a look at the market as uh, you know, just opportunities abound, and this is one of those days. Uh, Binance coin number three, it had a massive run, but it's uh, even that retraced 13%. Tether's Tether, nobody cares. Polka dot, still at $35, but it's down. Everything's down, let's just be honest, except for XRP. Congratulations, XRP. This is your day, right? Everything's down. You guys are up 6%. Congratulations. That's amazing. And then everything else is pretty much, uh, you know, just going down, down, down. But there is one. Crypto.com is up 60% in the 24-hour time frame. What's going on? Actually, is it 60%? Yeah, 24 hour time. And in the last hour, it went down a little bit. But we're going to talk about why it is going up so much. And it, it totally makes sense. I don't really know why they did this huge burn, but uh, we'll go over that in a bit. So it looks pretty good. Let's just do like the one hour projected range. And so I would like to do this to see what could potentially goes up. Uh, LA token. No idea what that is, but apparently it could go up 26%. Or it, with 90% assurance, it's going to go up 6.85%. And this is from you know, Trade the Chain because they do all the different sentiment analysis. Uh, Utrust, Bitcoin Gold, I wouldn't touch that, but okay. Engine Coin, that's a good one. Uh, I used to actually have Engine Coin. Uh, pretty good for uh, uh, NFTs and uh, gameplay and stuff like that. Tomo Chain, BitTorrent. Oh, my friend George is going to love this. 8% up potentially. So, And then Crypto.com, 
you never know where that's going to go. So that's what's going on on this side. Let's just delve into what is really going on as far as the market. So um, this was just a screen capture I had uh, over there at CoinGecko, and it just it just shows you the you know the veracity or just how um, amazing these things can dip. And we we saw a pretty big dip right here, fifty eight three oh seven down to 49.116. So not 10,000 exactly, but pretty darn close. Again, if you're in the market, just get used to this. 10% isn't a big deal. 20%, meh. 30%, all right, now we're talking. 40%, I'm listening. And then on and on you go. So uh, this is not the traditional market space. Uh, some people, you know, in the traditional market, they're like, hey, we went up 10% or whatever. I'm like, that, that's a Tuesday for us, who cares? So uh, this is just a different different space and uh, no need to worry about it because uh, it's volatile and 10% uh, swings, not a big deal. 20%, psh, we'll probably see a retracement. We're already up uh, back up to 53,000. So look, uh, you just gotta take it with a grain of salt. So what's going on? All right, so we'll talk about it. So Elon Musk said on a tweet, and he just talked about, I'm gonna go this very quickly because I it's kind of goofy. Elon Musk said, hey, you know, there might be some old, things might be overvalued as far as the crypto market, but it is less, <laughs> he said it's less dumb money than than uh, fiat. Like, oh, that makes sense. That's the whole story. So, okay, we got that one. And then the second one is, this was from, let me let me minimize this. Actually, let me blow this up so you can actually see it. Uh, I showed this before. Yeah, this is from uh, friends of the show, George over there at Cryptos R Us, who just hit 100,000, 100,000. Uh, yeah, 104,000 uh, viewers. Congratulations, George over at Cryptos R Us. And he's always got this great data right here uh, from Crypto, Crypto Quant. And he talks about how there's this huge outflow, which you can see. Uh, yeah, you can't see my mouse, unfortunately. But uh, it said uh, 1.6 billion worth. And then he talks about how MicroStrategy should uh, gobble that up for these institutions. However, you know, when we take a look at this, we're like, that's a lot of Bitcoin for these miners to dump. And if you don't know F2 pool, it's one of the five big uh, mining pools there based in China. But remember, they're a mining pool. So all the different, uh, you know, people, uh, different miners uh, will connect to them, but they have a lot of a lot of their rigs right there, I suppose. And uh, they just dumped a ton of Bitcoin on the market, which is, it is kind of odd, uh, especially with what we talked about this weekend, as far as like Michael Saylor said that a lot of these uh, mining pools could just borrow against the Bitcoin that they have and uh, put it on the um, uh, debt market and then, you know, have this debt for one, three, five years and, uh, you know, let it ride. But for some reason, whatever the reason is, F2 pools like, nope, we want to get rid of this. And they put a ton of it uh, on the open market. So when people talk to me and they're like, you know, hey, you know, we're not going to see big retracements or something like that. This isn't a big retracement. Just it, it's like 7%, 8%. But um, I still think that we're going to have a bear market at some point. Nothing goes up forever. And uh, just so you know, like these types of things, if people are always saying, well, the institutions are here, never going to go anywhere, never going to sell. Sure. Uh, I, I've heard that song of dance before. And uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. I mean, to me, it only makes sense that things will just continue to go up. It made sense to me in 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020. But you have to have let the world catch up to you uh, at some point because a lot of people just don't get it. I mean, heck, even the Motley Fool, who are supposed to be these genius uh, geniuses for finance, they just uh, like a week ago said, "Hey, we're going to buy five million of Bitcoin at fifty grand. Good job." So, I mean, with all these things that are going on, you just kind of have to take it with a grain of salt and go, "All right." Um, I just don't think that uh, that much mass amount of Bitcoin they can't. There's there's only so much they can gobble up and. Once new people come in, like more retail like us, uh, we might get a little bit scared and start to sell. That's why you're watching this channel. So I'm trying to just alleviate some of those fears and say, this is normal. No big deal. Next day, here we come. All right. So we have that part. And then, of course, there's another piece here. Uh, somebody said, oh, I just got a call from my Chinese friend. Looks like drop is due to reopening of the, of the Chinese markets. Just a temporary sell-off. Sure. So you take all those three things together and you go, well, maybe it's this or maybe it's this, maybe it's this. But I'm going to ask you a question right now. Who cares? Who cares what it is? It, it, I mean, that, does it really matter? Does it really matter like th there was a reason for this or reason for that, that, uh, that they sold off? Who cares? All you got to do is just sit back and look at this and go, what does this mean to me? So if you've been in for like more than a month, this isn't a big deal. Because you're just like, okay, well, uh, what happened is that it went down. I just told my, I, before I did this video, I, 
I was telling my wife, I go, hey, just so you know, uh, Bitcoin uh, dumped a little bit and it's down 10,000, which means the entire market's down. So please make sure that you buy some crypto. Okay. She's like, okay. And then uh, our, our big thing is we're not going to buy any more Bitcoin right now. We have our positions. Uh, but I told her, don't forget to buy Cardano. Don't forget to buy Voyager. Or if you want to do some polka dot, that type of thing. I go, but just make sure you buy something today. Okay. And that's it. So as a investor, this is, these are the, the time that you have to, to uh, live for and just go, ah, oh, thanks for the gift. I really appreciate it. Now, if you're a trader and you just got wrecked because you're over leveraged and things like that, I, I can't help you on, on that one. Uh, but uh, hey, there's uh, just more days. That's why I'm not a big trader. I mean, I know there's a lot of people on the channel that, that love trading. I just can't do it. Just a little crazy for me. I just think, you know, I'll just buy and hold. I'll hit my positions and then... Uh, when I want to cash out, I cash out. So again, not a big deal. This is just one of those days. Anyhow, let me know what you think in the comment section. And uh, let's move on to our next piece, which really wasn't a next piece, just actually an add-on. I just want to remind you of all the naysayers out there, especially if you're new. What's the term? Haters going to hate. Haters going to hate, right? And uh, this was from JP Morgan. If you don't, you know, if, if you've been here uh, for a while, you know that Jamie Dimon was like, I will fire any trader or anybody who's un un under my employment who deals in Bitcoin or sells and trades Bitcoin. Meanwhile, they were mining it. They were, <laughs> I think they were secretly buying it too. So, uh, you know, here we are. And JP Morgan, this was like a month ago, they said, Bitcoin will never go above 40,000 again. Just can't really sustain it, right? Experts are funny uh, because experts can only tell you what was. They can't tell you what will be. So when we look at these, these financial experts in traditional markets, sure, it makes sense, right? But uh, that's the traditional markets. And again, it's a little bit different. So just remember when you're seeing all these naysayers and they say it's not going to happen, not going to happen, look at some of the past things they've said and look at how many times Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and digital assets have died. And here we are. So just a little reminder, that's all. And uh, next piece. So uh, the next part here, I thought this was interesting. Uh, one of my guys, one of my... Uh, uh, vet friends uh, uh, from sent me this email goes, hey, man, just so you know, this is what's going on with crypto.com. Why it's up so much. So thanks. I appreciate it, man. So there's really just two things here. Crypto.com is it's, it's doing a lot of good things. It's uh, it, it's an exchange. It has an app. People seem to love it. I can't get into it. It's, I, don't, I don't know. I just don't get into it. But people love it. I mean, people love crypto.com. So what they're doing right now, they have a max token supply for their crow, their crow token. And uh, it's 100 billion. And the CEO and the powers that be said, you know what, we're going to burn 70 billion of that. And that's going to be right ahead of our main net launch, which will be March 31st. So they're going to get off the ERC20 token. They're going to go to their main net, which is always a good thing. Uh, if you know, if you've ever seen main net launches before, just know that uh, usually the price runs up before the main net launch. And it's kind of like a couple of days or a day before. It usually dumps for a while. So uh, if you're into that thing, uh, that would be a good thing to chase. I'm not a chaser. I'm just an investor. So just uh, be aware of that. But uh, I, I thought it was interesting that they would burn 70 billion of their tokens and go, we're going to get away with that and just stick with 30 billion. Um, I think it's a smart move. That's a lot of tokens. That's a lot of effing. That's a lot of tokens. So uh, it's a pretty great move. It'll probably keep going up. If you're looking to invest in, in the crow, probably would be a time, not financial advice, not a financial planner or advisor, but uh, that is an option up to you. Just want to give it to you. And uh, that is it for that piece. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on to our last piece, which is all about Ledger. So Ledger, uh, Nano Ledger S and X and all those things, uh, you can, they are a fantastic product. Uh, they haven't been hacked. The actual device has never been hacked. It's been around for years and it works. What doesn't work so well are the actual websites and the API integrations that Ledger has done for when people actually have bought their nano ledgers. And the problem here is that uh, they were hacked about, I want to say a month, month and a half ago. Check me in the comments section. But there was a data breach for a lot of personal information. And we're not talking about like just like your name. We're talking about like, uh, your name, your phone number, your address, I mean, everything that, that you could think of, socials, social security, thing, I believe. And uh, it was a bad deal. And I said, I like Ledger, I, I like the company, but they to me, they handle it very poorly, like ex extremely poorly. Uh, and I, that's just how I see it. Um, 
there was an old, and I, I, I talked about this before, there was, there was an old story. It was, uh, I believe it was Tylenol. Tylenol or aspirin, one of those two. This is back in the early 80s. Someone was, uh, was uh, poisoning the, the bottles. They would open them up and they would put in, I think it was cyanide. There was, it was, and people would die from it. It's an awful story. Don't want to get into it. But what the company did is they said, hey, this is happening on our watch. This is what we're going to do. We're going to make tamper-proof resistant uh, seals, cotton inside, so that when you if you open the bottle and there's any kind of tampering, throw those bottles away. And they got in front of it, and that's why that company is still around. So like with this situation, like with Ledger, uh, I think they should have come out like, like hard like in the very beginning and just like start just pounding it. Like this is what we're doing, this is what's going on. What, and they probably did. They, I mean, they probably said, well, we, we, you know, we put a bunch of emails out on Twitter. There's nothing better than a person's face talking to you about what they screwed up on and how they were going to fix it. That is the best thing of all time. So again, uh, I've done, I've made many mistakes in my businesses and I'm always, well, I try to be the first one to go, I messed up. This is what we're going to do. Uh, I'll fix it. And then we go from there. And it, it, it usually works out pretty well. So just so you know, I'll link this in the description. Uh, they're going to have, uh, looks like this, uh, Matt Johnson, the CI, the Chief Information Security Officer. He's going to be there on Friday, February 26th to do an AMA about what's going on a month later. Uh, I guess better late than never. So that's what we got today. That's what's happening. So that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked it, I'll go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you want to hear more things like this, uh, consider subscribing because a lot of things we talk about are time sensitive, like all the stories we just uh, reviewed. And uh, finally, if you'd like these types of videos, I'm going to link two more on the left and right. I'll let YouTube do its magic. And that is it for today. So thanks so much for dropping by. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.